hematopoietic stem cell treatments, the so-called bone marrow transplants for multiple sclerosis uh, done in the appropriate population in a timely way uh, can be uh, achieved today with huge safety, minimal mortality, minimal morbidity, and very high efficacy. So it's, it's no longer a, should we think about this as a, a treatment option? It's a treatment option. Mm -hmm. and, and like many of these very sophisticated treatment options, you have to be careful of where you have it done. It should be a reputable center, um, a center that has a, a, a large experience in doing these, not that dabble in them, uh, because it's not just the transplant that's the issue. It's the peritransplant care that minimizes some of the problems that can occur, and that's key if you have a center like that. So those are uh, probably, that should be mainstream now. I don't think we need it. There's two big trials going in North America right now trying to say, trying to prove that bone marrow transplant is better than even the best of the drugs that we have today. I'm not sure that study needs to happen. We're trying to get one going in Canada, mainly to get our colleagues the experience that we've had in seeing such patients who've gone through the transplant. So that's, I think, the main reason for doing it. But there's groups in throughout Europe, I think there's probably half a dozen phase three trials going as we speak, doing the, showing the proof that in a randomized way, these patients, uh, even getting the best therapy out there that's uh, an approved disease modifying therapy are not gonna do as well. Mesenchymal stem cells are a whole other thing. I think they've been, um, the, the, they've been touted by uh, a number of centers uh, for the sole purpose of making money. And our patients have to be very careful of that. Uh, they still go places to, because they think they're getting mesenchymal stem cells. Anybody who's getting them in the morning and derived from their whatever, a bone marrow or, uh, or a liposuction, and they're giving them back in the afternoon, this is nonsense, utter nonsense. I mean, you could probably count the cells yourself in a tube, that's how few they're going to get. You need a culture facility, and that's what makes it very expensive. We need probably to partner with uh, uh, an industry that makes these cells on a regular basis for us to move this field forward. Otherwise, um, it's going to be very hard to get that technique uh, in the mainstream simply because it's so costly per individual, very time consuming, it takes three and a half weeks to measure to, to actually raise the cells in a proper laboratory. So it, it's never gonna be a, uh, in, that, in that way, a huge treatment for patients. We, we're gonna need something uh, in the way of uh, a factory to make the cells. That, that's basically the story. We have uh, a lot of data that says patients who have early aggressive disease, people who's after a first attack start to already accumulate disability, They've tried a medicine, they continue to have attacks, they continue to have active MRIs. If you've tried a higher efficacy therapy and you still have this, I mean, the writing's on the wall. I would get them to a stem cell center before they acquire too much disability that it's not going to have the same impact. But people don't recognize where these centers are. And they're not everywhere. And not everyone is doing bone marrow transplant well. There are some centers that use different techniques. As I indicated to you, the conditioning regimen is one of the factors. The ability to do cell separation is, this, is one of the other factors. So there are reputable centers throughout the U.S. that are doing various types of bone marrow transplants. Um, most people know where these centers are. But there's a lot of patients who live in areas where there are simply nobody doing bone marrow transplants for autoimmune disease. And you have to know and find out where these people are so that they can be referred and, and have access.